We're back with Rocket, uh, air traffic controller for almost 30 years. We watched the F-16 flame out landing. That was awesome. G great uh, crew resource management video. Check that out if you haven't seen it already. This is more recent, uh, and it involves an air traffic controller helping out a pilot. And I wanted Rocket's reaction because it's an F-16 declaring min fuel, and then the air traffic controller uh, helps him out, finds him a tanker. So... Uh, Rocket, welcome back. Thanks for coming back to the channel. Thank you. Thank you for having me. The F-16 checks in min fuel, and the controller's like, boy, have I got a deal for you. Here we go. Please pass on to Syracuse, uh, minimum vectors, and... Uh and uh, Venom Zero One, as it stands it right now, awesome. we've got you uh, direct to the field. Expect no vectors or delay. Next sector knows that you're minimum fuel, and uh, you can contact Boston Center now. Tree Seven Seven Point One. Thank you. Venom Okay, right now it's just a minimum fuel scenario, which means I can't really accept any delays or deviations otherwise i'll be landing at less than my minimum fuel which in the f-16 uh i don't know which block this is but it's around 800 pounds uh, and then you go emergency fuel at 600 pounds uh, rocket what does it mean for a controller when you're here in minimum fuel great question a minimum fuel to us means no delay in the traffic pattern we're going to get you to the airport Without any restrictions or flow, you're going to be prioritized to be number one. Uh, but I want to caution uh, as pilot, you as being on the pilot side now, if I'm going to declare men fuel, I'm going to let the controller know exactly what it is I'm going to need. Because although this guy made a good call, the pilot did, he said, I want no delay. That was kind of a click something in my mind to say, well, you know, men fuel means you're not going to get a delay. How serious is this a situation? So I think I would reach out and ask him, how much deal do you have in time mm -hmm. to yeah. give me a, a working figure to work with so we can, I can work in my mind. Is this guy going to get here? Do I need to move people out of his way? He says, no, undo delay. I mean, I can still make a number two or number three. If I better give him an undo delay, maybe I need to make a number one. They mm -hmm. got to do the preparation. Venom is one Boston Center right so bison's a couple tankers they're doing pre-planned air refueling out here um they are not coordinated with this fighter so the two d do not know each other at this moment bison two one roger have that on request and you're looking for uh, a booger and what other flight Booker. Crazy. Roger. Venom 1, um, I know you're going to Syracuse in minimum fuel. I do have a tanker in AR-609 waiting for some uh, F-16s that are also out of Burlington. Uh, I don't know if we could arrange that, if, if you can or if you want, be interested in re getting a little refuel prior to going to Syracuse. Yes. I love that. I love that. I love it. Yep. Uh, so as a controller, because this is really, I know everybody's like, well, that's common sense. It's not. This is outside of the box thinking. What What is a controller like? How much leeway do you have to kind of play pickup games like this? And you're exactly right. That's not in the book. Um, and you got to get kudos to this guy for being fast on its feet. They can, well, you know what? I got the tankers so that are full of gas. Why don't we help this guy out? So it was being innovator. It was being out of the box. And uh, that. That takes a lot of initiative in the head to, to do that. Is it a high risk, high reward situation for the controller? I mean, it you is. Know, we've got a plan right now and we're about to deviate from it. It what is. Do absolutely. Yeah, I do think it's high risk and high reward. And I'm going to take that risk. If I was this guy's supervisor, I'd say, let's go for it. Good call. Let's see if we can make it happen. And awesome. then I would be doing everything I could to make it happen. Now, there have been instances, uh, there is one. Where, well, oftentimes we'll ask another airplane if a aircraft is lost and we think we know where it is or an aircraft may having a mechanical problem. 
you may ask him, can we bike you towards this guy to keep you to pick him up visually? <laughs> and 99 times out loud, or Bob's going to do it. He's going to help it still wherever now. But that's another big risk to take. What if those aircraft were on uh, IFR flight plan? Now, are you canceling their IFR? Are you changing their standard separation? What if they get a little too far? Or, yeah. you know, these are high risk, high reward. So you have to have some discretion in that, and you better have a good plan. Did you're going to have to get that old for it. Yeah, and just from a single-engine fighter pilot's perspective, an F-16 pilot's perspective, it's high risk for him, too, to say yes. Because right now, he's forecasting min fuel, right? Not emergency fuel, but min fuel. Min fuel we can accept because it means we're going to arrive at initial with uh, our minimum fuel numbers. That's fine. We're not going to accept a delay. With tanking, there are some uncertainty uh, items that kind of come up. One, can the tanker and I rendezvous? Can we get together? Which you think is common sense, but I don't. I don't have this pre-briefed. I don't necessarily know this because I didn't. I didn't plan for this tanker. It's not like Iraq where we always had tankers or deployed or whatever. This is peacetime training environment. I wasn't planning on going to the tanker, so I might not have those products. Number two, once I find the tanker, how much fuel did I burn doing the rejoin? that I put myself in an emergency fuel situation if I can't take fuel. Because once you plug in, it's not like going to the Sunoco station and plugging in, the boom might have issues, the boom, uh, the fuel system might have issues, your own jet may not take fuel. You know, it, it, there are different things that could go wrong. And now, instead of being min fuel, you're below emergency fuel because you just deviated from your direct path because now they're no longer going direct. Those are just things I would consider. I'm not saying this was a bad call. I'm just saying that you and it's a high risk, high reward situation in combat. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Uh, you know, if this was an alert scramble or something where, you know, I need to stay airborne or else somebody's going to die. 1000% I'm doing this every day. But in peacetime training, where it's just maybe an inconvenience if I divert, or it's an inconvenience if I, you know, land in min fuel or whatever and have to divert a bunch of airliners out of my way, I don't know that I'm taking this risk. But I do love that the controller thought of it, and I love that you know there they they took there was no hesitation. But right. just things to consider that it's not always yes no and an easy thing because things go wrong. I see yep. two one Boston. Go I have a single F-16, 40 miles to your east, minimum fuel at level 280. He is uh, bingo fuel right now, going to Syracuse, diverting from Burlington. Would you be willing to uh, refuel, give him a little uh, fuel? Affirmative, provide if you want place. No hesitation from these guys either. Yep. And I would point out that it's a risk for them too. Yeah. Correct. I mean, they might, they could say no, they might not have the offload to do it. You know, they might not be planned for it. I think 99 out of a hundred times, we're going to try to help out our fellow aviators as you've talked about, but there's still that risk that you say, yes, something goes wrong. And now the accident report throws you under the bus because you just did unplanned tanking for a non-emergency aircraft. What were, you know, I mean, we're, we live in a, risk averse society now where if you if it goes wrong even if you had the right intention they're going to come after you then one the uh the uhf uh, primary uh for the refueling 276 decimal five copy 276 bring them to me immediately bring them to me immediately. Bring them to me immediately. Bring them to i love it one five zero or by 51 five Venom two, Venom one, uh, the tanker Bison two one uh, flight of two is uh, turning to a one five zero degree heading. Um, you'll be able to intercept them in about uh, four minutes. Venom, thanks. Venom one, uh, the Bison flight's turning to a one fifty heading southeasterly heading, and uh, is declared Marsa. And uh, just let you know when you have a uh, radar on them. So just for the kids at home, Marsa. That means military assumes responsibility for separation of aircraft. It means we've got it, right? Yeah, and that's a, that's a big thing because the controller is responsible for the separation between the flight until somebody says we can do Marsa. So he's got to be three miles, five miles away from them until they get that square away. 
Do you think the controller, I mean, it's hard to play mind reader, but do you think the controller at this point is thinking, well, what happens if, what happens if this, like, what's my next game plan if it doesn't work out for this guy? No, I think he's committed to his plan and I think he's pretty confident that it's going to work. I know I am. Yeah. <laughs> Venom radar contact. Venom 1, Roger. Bison 2 1, Venom 1, clear to conduct aerial refueling along AR 609, maintain refueling altitude, supply level 250, flight level 280. Venom, clear to conduct AR 609, flight level block out to 2528 with head of Bison 2 1, you can maneuver as necessary to uh, affect the, uh, the intercept and the refueling. Bison 2 1, affirmative, thank you. Venom 1, change tanker frequencies approved. Yes, sir, I know you've been busy. It's Envoy 3668. We had to level off 230. Envoy, Envoy uh, 3668, roger. Climb and maintain uh, yeah. final 340. Yeah. Climb 340, Envoy 3668. Nice job with those guys. Center. Venom 01, tanker's in sight. Venom 01, roger. Change tanker frequency approved. And uh, just uh, give me a call when you uh, are done and what you'd like to do. Yeah, I don't know how accurate this depiction of the rejoin is, but to save fuel, I would have loved to have been a lot more of a cutoff and not squared this quarter, but it works yeah, out. That, I am uh, up both frequencies right now. Just stay up this way. Venom 1, understand. Off center, Bison. Venom 1, Bison 2-1, 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 Bison 2-1,
I think he made the call third, probably. The okay. controller. And then he said, hey, this one's under the boss. That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, that. <laughs> great job. Great job for the controller. Uh, I love it. I love when controllers help us out. I've been in so many situations where controllers have saved my butt. So I appreciate all the help. They're here to help you. It goes both ways. As you could say, you know, the controller, he had helped with somebody. He died from those careers that were around them. Uh, yeah. There's been many times uh, where I've got, especially with the F-16, the McDill. Hey, Retire 2-3, I need to hold you down or I can find you up now that you got to get me your best rate up to 12,000 feet. I'm level at 12. <laughs> <laughs> it's always fun. I always loved it when the, and the gloves came off, the handcuffs right. came off. But uh, I, I think great job, you know, Venom, uh, the F-16 pilot, because the thing is, I think people don't realize, you know, yeah, you, you refuel all the time, but under that kind of, stress of, Hey, if I don't get this right, I'm going to probably end up in an emergency. He did a great job. You know, he, he did, did a great job finding the tanker that he had he not briefed or planned for. Uh, now our, there was something about the, the base was refueling. So he could have worked with them the day prior. He could have, you know, known about it and stuff. So it may not have been completely cold, but either way, when your mind is not thinking I'm going to have to go refuel to go, you know, immediately say yes when the controller does that. And then it just worked. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that we're, I don't want people to think, well, you know, he's being a naysayer. There's risk involved. You have to think about it. You have to mitigate it, but it worked out and it was an awesome thing. Absolutely. Well, Rocket, I appreciate your perspective on this. Uh, thank you for joining us yet again. And uh, we'll have you on the uh, Mover and Gonky show sometime to talk about all the real world events. Well, thank you for having me. It's an honor. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Mm -hmm.